worship at Grace Lutheran Church, the second Sunday in Pentecost, June 14th. We begin with our prelude. Good morning and welcome to our worship for the second Sunday in Pentecost. Um, we're glad to have you with us here this morning. Um, let's see, a few announcements before we begin. Um, many thanks go out this morning. Uh, of course, we thank uh, Steve Zeminski for our music. We thank my friend and neighbor Alice Mudge from Holy Spirit Emmaus uh, for her technical support and also for Chris Becker today. Um, I also want to thank the Smacks and the Shapers. Um, these two families who've been coming in and doing a bunch of yard work around here. Uh, John's been doing work inside. Chris has been doing work inside. Barb uh, Cochran came in and did altar guild and um, Mary Schaefer came in and gave us our wonderful new flower arrangement. So thanks so much to all of you and, and my forgiveness anyone that I'm missing for all the work you do around here that makes things go smoothly. Thank you also for the food donations that have been coming in. Um, our, our back chapel closet and hallway are just packed with non-perishable goods, getting ready for our uh, food, food bank annex that, that's happening at the end of the month and outpost of the Zionsville area food bank where we'll be, we will be giving out food items at the end of this month. And you can read more about that on the website or in the newsletter. Um, as you saw, if you read this week's grace notes, the, our church council met on Tuesday via Zoom teleconference and one of our first orders of business or one of our biggest orders of business was discussing the safe reopening of the building to worship and meetings and other groups. 
Um, we decided, you know, we want to take this slowly and cautiously. We're waiting until Lehigh County is in the green phase and we're putting together a plan. Um, there is a 36 page document that came out from the ELCA home office in Chicago that we'll be reading. And then we have a task force made up of staff, council members and worship and music committee members that will be meeting by a teleconference starting this week to discuss the things we need to put a plan in place. Um, and as I said, we don't have a date certain set. It's, it's too premature at this point, but rest assured we want to reopen the building and we will. If you have any questions or comments, you are always as welcome to ca uh, contact Phil Moore, our council president, or myself. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, yes, and today, today coming up at uh, 1130 on Sunday, morning. I look forward to seeing as many smiling faces as possible at our Zoom coffee hour that we've been holding every two weeks. This is uh, Sunday morning, 1130, and the email went out with the instructions for that. Uh, before we begin, um, our custom is to have a blessing each week, a thanks and a blessing for something. Um, now, I blessed masks already. Uh, I blessed specific masks, masks that uh, members of the congregation had made to be handed out or people could come pick them up or we would deliver them or so forth. But I have another mask blessing today. This is more of a general one for everyone wearing a mask, which these days is all of us. And it gets tiresome and especially now that the weather's warmer, your face gets sweaty, but it's still an important thing we need to do when we are amongst larger gatherings than the people we're quarantining with. So let us pray. Great physician, giver of all life, may this mask I wear show your true face, a face of mercy and compassion, a face that loves others above myself, a face that protects the vulnerable and weak. As I wear this mask, save and protect me from danger that may come my way. As I wear this mask, save and protect others from danger I may send their way, even without meaning to. As once you hid your face from Moses in order to reveal the glory of your presence, teach us to hide our outward faces, to reveal our inward love for the world, and the glory of our, your presence in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And credit for this prayer goes to Reverend Carol Ferguson of Crescent Springs Presbyterian Church. Let us begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that we do not trust your abundance, and, and we deny your presence in our lives. We, we place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. efforts. We, we fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We, we abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We, we fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven, so let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin with our opening hymn, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. first reading is recorded in the 19th chapter of Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be made your treasured possessions out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine. You shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
The second lesson is recorded in the fifth chapter of Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew uh, chapter 9 verse 35 to 10 uh, verses 8 to 23 glory, glory to you O Lord. Lord Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness when he saw the crowds he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leopards, cast lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out a sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in the synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ.
Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I don't usually title my sermons, a lot of pastors do, but I kind of got away from it because far too often the actual sermon ends up being far different than the title I gave the secretary in time to go into the bulletin that week. But this week there's a title, and that title is Sending. You see, this week I used the word sending as a password for a couple of the Zoom meetings I hosted, and half the people thought the email I sent meant, here's the meeting link, but I'll be sending the password at another time. Um, I got a lot of emails and phone calls saying, Pastor, what's the password? You never sent it. Uh, I accidentally created a sort of who's on first situation. You know, I'm sending, the, the password is sending. What is it? No, it's, anyway. Um, I was trying to be biblical. I only succeeded in being confusing. Lesson learned. Next week's password will be Maharshalal Hashbaz. Look it up. <laughs> but anyway, there's a reason I chose sending as the password this week, and it, it's not to be confusing. It has to do with this week's uh, lessons. In this week's Revised Common Lectionary Lessons, uh, read by Alice and myself, God is filling us up, and God is sending us. Apostle means one who is sent. We are apostles. We are sent with God's message. It's all about the sending. Now, uh, if you want to change the channel, you've gotten the gist of the message. Go in peace, serve the Lord. But if you want to hang in there, put me on pause, get yourself a drink and a snack, and come back and I'll unpack this. Uh, so as I said, in all our texts today, God is giving us a message and sending us to take it to a particular people. But God doesn't just strap the message to our leg and throw us out the window like a carrier pigeon. God gets us ready first. And that first step is establishing relationship. God puts relationship before anything else. There's a lesson there for us. In the reading from Exodus, God is getting ready to give the law to the people. Following this, this reading, there are specific directions to the people about consecration, which means setting apart. Wash your clothes, get ready, make yourselves clean, God says, and whatever you do, when you see that cloud up on the mountain, do not come up there, person or animal, or you, were you will surely die. You're going to hear thunder and know that it's my voice speaking, but do not come unless I send for you. That's how this chapter ends, and in the next chapter, God gives the Ten Commandments. But before any of that, God establishes relationship with God's people. First comes reminding them of their history together at this point, and then a little bit about what's up next. So he tells Moses, Thus shall you say to the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. It's kind of like, as creator of the universe, everything belongs to me. You know I have this power. You saw how I delivered you from slavery. Now I want to establish a covenant with you, which if you keep, you will be a holy nation. But before God gave the law, God established the relationship. And next up we have Paul talking to the Romans, explaining who Jesus Christ is, what he did, what he does, how he changes us. Romans is full of treasure. We only get a little bit of a snippet of it today, but I suggest you read the whole chapter, the whole, the whole letter. What I want to highlight this morning is this. Paul could talk to the Romans because he was a Roman. Yes, he was a Jew. He was a faithful Pharisee. He was a, um, a follower of Jesus Christ, obviously, but he was also a Roman citizen. He had an in with these people, but more than that, he was well-versed in Roman rhetoric. He knew how to explain things to them. He was well-versed in Roman culture with the whole honor-shame system the Romans had to govern all aspects of society from top to bottom. This is why he says, 
And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. So what he's explaining is, look, Romans, if you put your hope in this Jesus the Christ, you will never be put to shame, for he died for you before you cared who he was, before you even <coughs> knew who he was. He's talking to them as one of them. And even more, he's talking from his heart out of his own experience. Because in spite of all his hardships, Paul saw that in his suffering, he grew closer to God through his relationship with Jesus Christ. Lastly, we come to the sending, sending of the 12 in Matthew. Now, just as God prepared Moses and the people of Israel before giving them the law, Jesus prepares the apostles before he sends them. He gives them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and sickness. Then he gives the marching orders. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, so give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, no extra clothing or shoes or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. And note this, he sends them not to Gentiles or Samaritans, but to their own people, the lost sheep of their own kind. Here again, it's about relationship. Jesus is saying, go talk to the people that you know. This is who you have to reach, not strangers, but your own people. The people you know, the people with whom you share a faith and a way of life. You have to have that relationship first. And when you speak, be wise and also innocent. But don't worry too much about what to say because it won't be you speaking, but the Holy Spirit through you. I spoke last week about being actively racist in our lives and how we go about that or why we need to go about that. I think Jesus gives us a good how right here in this gospel lesson. Go talk to your own people and be wise and gentle, not combative. And Jesus adds, if you don't get anywhere, if your words are not received, shake the dust off your feet and move on. But know that I am sending you to do this work, and I am being completely honest with you about what will happen. This kind of talk might could divide families, and you will be hated because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is what we have to do, beloved in Christ. Tell people that the kingdom of God has come near, and that kingdom is for everybody. It's the simplest thing in the world, and it's the hardest thing in the world. But once again, as I so often say, we are not alone. Jesus walks with us, and we go to this work together. I know you will hold me to this and pray for me as I pray for you. Let us pray. God of all nations be with us. Unite us to work for justice and love. Pour out your strength and your wisdom on us. Help us to pray right and to act right. And God, please keep reminding us not to worry too much about how we are to speak or what we are to say, for it will be given to us through your Holy Spirit. God, give us the grace to live into what you would have us be one day at a time. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Let us share our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and with the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Help us to use our words to welcome all God's children to your table. Guide your church that we might be a holy people unto you. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals to care for all who suffer in any need. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Especially we name today Cynthia, Ron, Kathy, Jeanette, Betsy, Patty, Sharon, Andrew, and Rod. Feed all who hunger, Empower all whose voices go unheard, and help us to respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful gift, a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we may discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart in announcing to our people that the kingdom of God is at hand. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear now this great benediction from Romans 8. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is ELW 669, Rise Up, O Saints of God.
go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.